So we've gone through the introduction to the metric system, I've talked about these different prefixes and how they relate to one another numerically. Now what I'm going to show you is how to convert. And there are two different methods I use to convert, and then I'm going to give you additional videos where I actually go through several examples other than this one. So the two ways I'm going to show you how to convert. One is mathematical, one is visual. Pick the one that works for you and get very, very comfortable with performing that particular technique. So first and foremost, I'm going to do the mathematical. And that's going to require us to remember the numeric values for each of these different prefixes. So again, 10 to the third, 10 to the second, 10 to the first, 10 to the zero, 10 to the negative one, and so on and so forth. I am going to skip these blanks, but you'll need to remember again that each of those represents one of these numeric values. So now, as an example, let's start simple. Let's say that we have one meter, and I want to convert that to centimeters. So first and foremost, the numeric way to do this. To do this numerically and mathematically, what you'll do is first you will identify the numeric value that corresponds to each of your prefixes. So in this particular instance, I'm using the base unit, which corresponds to 10 to the 0. And I'm converting to centa, which represent, represents and corresponds to 10 to the negative 2. The next thing you're going to do, so this is step 1. Step 2, you're going to change this number here so that it is 1 or whatever value it is numerically, times. And then what you're going to multiply it by is this base 10, or that is this particular value for your starting prefix, n to the 0, divided by the numeric value that corresponds to your final prefix. So I have 1 times 10 to the 0 divided by 10 to the negative 2. So now what I need to do is I need to simplify this. So I'm dividing two bases that have the same base but different exponents. And a law of exponents states that whenever we're dividing exponents with similar bases, we can simply subtract the exponent of the denominator from the exponent of the numerator. So this is going to actually be equal to 1 times 10 to the 0 minus the negative 2. Anytime you subtract a negative, it becomes a positive. So my final answer is going to be 1 times 10 squared centimeters. And you hopefully remember that 10 squared is equal to 100. So that gives me the answer of 100 centimeters. So this is the answer we're looking for. This is the correct answer. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. So now what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you how you can do this visually in case you're not as comfortable at, with math as you'd like to be. So I'm going to leave up the 100 centimeters because that's where we know we're going. And I'll show you that what I'm going to do now is still going to give you the exact same answer. So again, one meter. How many centimeters? I'm going to erase these numeric values. Okay. For those of you who are visual, the first thing you should do when you're setting this up is memorize the order of these prefixes. Memorize that there are blanks between milla and micro, blanks between micro and nano, and blanks between nano and pico. Memorize that, and as soon as you can, draw this entire chart out. Once you've drawn this chart out, draw lines 
between each of the prefixes. Separate into columns. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to find where the decimal is in my starting number. So it's one, mil, uh, one meter, that's technically 1.0 meters. You're going to take your decimal and you're going to put it on the line to the right of your starting unit of measurement. So I'm starting with the base units of measurement, I'm going to take my decimal and I'm going to put it on this line to the right of those base units of measurement. So that's the first step place your decimal. Your decimal always starts to the right of your starting units and it always ends to the right of your final units of measurement. The next thing I'm going to do is I need to set up my number appropriately. And now this is a really easy number so I would highly encourage you if you're into the visual way to go ahead and check out the videos I'm going to post after this one so you can see what we do with more complicated numbers. This is a single digit number, so it's going to be very easy to set up. What you do then, after you've placed your decimal, is you take the number in the ones place, and you're going to put it directly underneath your starting unit of measurement. So, I'm going to put one underneath my base units of measurement. So I've set up my number at this point. Now I need to convert. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my decimal until I'm on the line to the right of my final unit of measurement. So I want to move this decimal until it is to the right of my final prefix. So here we go. One, two. So it's now on the line to the right of my final prefix. And I'm going to fill in any empty spaces I see with zeros. So I move this decimal, it's now gone from there, and it's over here, and if I write that number out, I get 100 centimeters, which is exactly what I got when I did it mathematically. So this shows you two different ways that you can do conversions between these prefixes. One mathematical if you're more comfortable with that, one that is more visual if you're comfortable with that. So in the next videos, I'm going to show you how to actually convert more difficult numbers between these units. So you'll definitely want to tune into those if you need assistance.